Hello guys, welcome back to another episode. Today we're going to learn how to create comments on our application and learn a little bit more about Laravel relationships. So this is going to be a fun one. Let's get started. First things first, I want to actually refactor our idea card a little bit and I want to remove the comments from it. So right now all the comments are inside the idea card. I'll, I want to extract them into their own blade file. So I'll go in our shared folder and I create a new comments box.blade.php file. I'll paste it in, I'll format it a little bit. And like we did before on the previous episode, I'll just include it here. So I say shared.comments box. And later on, I think we need to refactor our shared folder as well. It's getting very big. So we'll refactor these as we go along. And let's just make sure it is working. Good. So in order to actually you know, create a comment, we need to create a model, right? We need to create a controller. We need to create a migration for our table. And then we also need to set up the routes, right? So let's do all of these in order. I'll start off by creating our comments model. And the way we do that is very simple with PHP, with Laravel, we do PHP artisan. So artisan is a command line tool that comes with Laravel. We already have used it. So I say PHP artisan make model and then the name of your model. So we are doing comments and the general convention with Laravel is the singular version of your resource. So instead of comments, we do comment and Laravel actually has a kind of a helper here. Instead of running three separate commands, make model, make controller, make migration. We can just do tag M and tag C or if you just want the migration tag M and Laravel will go ahead and create the migration and controller for you as well using this name here. So it just saves some time. So from now on, I won't be running make migration and make controllers anymore, unless we only need like one singular controller, okay? So I'll run it and you can see uh, Laravel Artisan created a comments migration for us and a controllers migration. Sorry, a comment controller. And if you notice in the migration, Laravel actually included the S, so it's plural. So Laravel is very smart with these, so you don't need to actually worry about them. All right, I'll close everything else and let's actually define our migration. So what we need is a foreign ID for our idea. So I'll name it ID ID. And then we need the content of that comment. Now you can name it comment, you can name it uh, content, whatever you like. I think I go with content. So it's consistent with our ideas table and we could include a bunch more things, maybe updated at edited at, or maybe, you know, number of likes, things like that. For now, we'll keep it simple. So I'll go with only these two columns. So let's create them. And for our foreign ID, uh, this blueprint class actually has a foreign ID method. So it already comes in and I'm going to use idea ID. And the general convention is you use the name of the class your relationship and then underline and then ID. Okay. And of course this has to be singular, right? Our ideas, I, we have the ideas table, but here I'm using ID. And then we can add two more additional methods. One of them is called constraint. And what this does is make sure we cannot create comments for ideas that don't exist. So for example, if you try to create a comment with the negative 10 ID or like 1 million, uh, your database actually will throw an exception or give an error. So you have some error checking at the database level. And one more thing we can do is uh, called cascade on delete. And this one is very useful. All, all this does is basically if you delete your idea, it will delete the comments as well. And it just makes sure that you don't have to manually do it in code, right? Every time you delete ideas, delete all the comments associated with it as well. This will do it at the database level, saves us a bit, a bunch of time. And next up, we'll create our string, which is going to be the content of the comment. And I think we should be good to go. Uh, I don't want this to be nullable. Obviously, I want it to always be present there. And I, should be, I think we should be good to go. Let's go ahead and run this migration. I type in PHP artisan make, sorry, uh, migrate. That's set this back to what it was. And I say PHP artisan migrate. You guys should not have this issue. Unfortunately, I coughed in the middle of the previous recording session. So I say add, I'll add it to my Q 
kit as well so we have it okay so now that we have run our migration successfully what we need to do is go and define our routes and laravel actually has a naming convention for this that we can follow which makes life a bit easier and i have it in the laravel documentation and i'll leave this in the description for you guys as well and basically luckily for us laravel uses comments as well we can actually use this convention for our routes so all your ideas the idea in here and then comments and for the naming of the route we do ideas.comments.store so i'll use this exact naming convention here because that's what laravel recommends and it's also easy to read so i'll just copy this and i define them here and i say ideas and then we need to obviously add the idea so we know what we are commenting on and then comments and this one is going to be ideas.comments.store now instead of the idea controller here i'll use comment controller and i'll use the store method on that one okay and i believe we should be good to go on this front as well so i'll get rid of these hopefully everything is still works and we didn't break anything we did not now i think we can go ahead and actually uh, do the process of creation so first step is we need to define our route I'll, our form so i'll do form and then action equals uh, route and our route name was ideas dot comments dot store and then the method is going to be as always post uh, don't forget the csrf token and then at the end i'll say close form and i format it again i'll double check the name yep it's exactly the same so now we should actually be able to submit this one more thing we need to do is actually name add a name for our text area so i say content and i also add the type submit here i believe it still will submit it but i would like to add it just in case some browsers don't support it so Let's go ahead and reload and we get our first error. And the reason is we did not pass in the idea ID. So we can easily do that like we have done multiple times before. Just pass the ID and if we reload, it is indeed working now. So we are good to go. So I can just do a quick test, click test, post it and it is working. It's just telling us that the store method does not exist on our comment controller. So now we can go ahead and implement our controller. So Let's open up comment controller. I'll basically type in public function store exactly like we have done before. And just to make sure everything is working, I do dump. It's basically var dump in PHP, but with better styling. And I'll do request all. Basically, this method returns all the post request variables. So we can just see them for testing purposes. So let's try it again. And if I zoom in, you can see we get the token as well as the test. Okay, so it is working. Now, one thing we did forget here is we are actually passing in the idea as well, right? So if you guys remember the route model binding, we can actually get our idea from here. So I'll basically use the same idea of route model binding we did on our idea controller, same concept. So I'll do this one in our comments controller as well because we need the idea when we are creating our comment and now we can actually go ahead and create our comment very easily so i'll do the longer version first so you guys can follow along and say comment equals new comment this is what we did on our i believe fourth episode and we can say comment dot idea id equals to idea id so i'll first set the idea id so we have our relationship set up and then I say comment content equals to request the request helper helper and then so far we've been using the get and I, I believe I already mentioned this but we can actually content we can actually make this a little bit shorter and I have made a typo here by putting it inside here so it is up to you guys how you want to do it I like this uh, get a little bit more think it's a bit more uh, easy to read but it's up to you guys how you want to do it uh, i guess we could do it this way as well all right so it's totally up to you guys 
Uh, another way actually I didn't mention is you can also do it this way. I believe this should also work, but we can test it out in a second. Why not? Let's do it this way. So I'll say, uh, we can actually do DD, which is die, dump, die, dump and die. So it won't run the code afterwards and we can test it out, see if this works as well or not. And you can see we get tests. So this one also works. It's up to you, uh, which one you want to use. Okay. So I'll use the get, that's what I'm personally used to. So, and then to save it, we can say comment dot save. All right, and that's how we initially did it. There's a shorter version as well. I'll show you guys afterwards. And then after we created our comment, we can redirect the user by calling redirect. And then we wanna redirect to a specific route and the route is gonna be ideas.show. So I want to redirect the user to this page, right? The idea page, the page for the idea we just commented on. So we also need to pass in the idea ID to this show route because we need it. And then I also pass in a success message, a flash message. And I say, uh, comment post posted success fully. And that is it. So this should work. We still haven't added any validation. I'll do that in a second, but for now, I think this should work. So let's go and test it out and see what happens. So I'll reload the page and I say, hello there. And I'll post a comment and we do get the success message, but we are not actually able to see our comments. So like, let's go ahead and actually uh, display them here because we have some placeholder code here. So I'll, for now I'll keep it like this. So before we actually can display them, I want to show you guys how you can uh, do it using relationships. So the easy way of doing this is if we go on our, for example, dashboard controller, we could, you know, do a query like comment and then do where idea ID and then, you know, pass in sub ID here and then get all the comments. That's one way of doing it, but this looks very long and it's the, let's say worst way or longer version of doing it. The easier way is actually by using relationships in Laravel. And the way you define relationships in Laravel is through your models. So I'll first do it by going in our idea model. And the way you tell Laravel, hey, this idea has a relationship with comments is by first defining a method. So this is how you would do it. You type in public function and the name of your method is gonna be the name of the table idea has relationship with. So we have a relationship with the comments table and the plural is actually very important, right? Because, and then Afterwards, you can actually return the type of relationship you have. So this model actually has a bunch of built-in methods, right? So I'm going to say this. And so our idea has many comments, right? So just in plain English, right? It's a one to many. So you can just say has many, and you can see there is belongs to, there is many belongs to many, there is many built-in methods, but for now I say has many. And then afterwards, you need to tell Laravel has many of what, right? So you need to tell it your uh, model class. And I say comment class. And then you can pass in two additional arguments or parameters. And we can see it. VS Code is also telling me. The first one is a foreign, foreign key. And then the second one is the local key. So the foreign key is going to be basically idea ID. And then the local key is going to be ID, right? But you don't need to de define these if you're using the convention we initially mentioned, right? So if you're using the ID, the primary key ID, you don't need to actually pass this at all. And then for the foreign key, if you are basically following the model, model underline ID, you also don't need to pass this. Laravel automatically will figure it out. And this is how you actually define relationships in Laravel. And Laravel will magically, automatically, under the background, under the hood, go ahead and fetch all of your comments. And it's going to make our life so much easier. So let's see how this works in practice. We can actually go in our, uh, let's go in our idea controller. Why not? And I'll go idea controller. And I'll open up our show page. This is where we display a single idea. And I'm going to say DD idea. And in order to access all the comments for that idea, you just basically access this comments variable. You don't actually need to pass in the method. You just 
use the comments property and this will return to you all the comments for that model it's that simple actually to define relationships in laravel it is a bit different from what i think many people are used to so it takes some time to get used to it but once you learn it it makes life a lot easier so let's go and see if this actually works i reload the page and you can see it is returning us a uh, eloquent collection a collection is simply like an array with some additional functionality and you can see inside it we have a comment okay so right now we just created a comment and it actually exists here so it's that simple guys and let's now use this relationship we define using laravel to display all of our comments so i'll go in our comment box and this comment box obviously has access to the uh, ideas idea variable so I'll do for each, I do a loop, I say idea, comments. So, and again, notice here, I'm not putting the brackets, open and close brackets. I only am using comments. And then here, I'll, I'll just say comment. Okay, so each element in the array is going to be a singular comment. And I'll add this at the end over here. So we still don't have users and authentication. So I'll leave this as Luigi for now. And then, uh, so I'll just replace this part. And I say, comment content. All right. And also we can display this information here. Later on, I'll, I have a tutorial on dates in Laravel using Laravel Caravan. But for now, I'll just say comment created at. Okay, and again, created that is automatically created by Laravel in our migration. So let's go and see if this works. Hopefully it does. And as you can see, we can see hello here. I'll add another one, a second comment. And as you can see, it is also working. Super simple. I think I'll add an HR. I guess for now, this, this is just fine. Okay, so we have successfully created our comment implementation. Now, this video is getting a bit long, close to 20 minutes. So I'm going to end it here. On the next episode, we will do some small refactoring on our uh, comment controller. But that's it, guys. It's super simple. Uh, this is how you define relationships with Laravel. It does take some time to get used to, but it makes life a lot easier. You no longer need to write any queries to access relationships. And today we learned one to many relationships. Later on, we will learn many to many many to one, all the different combinations that we need. And that is it, guys. Have a great day. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more content. And I see you guys on the next episode. Bye.